Welcome back to episode 3 of making this Canon minigame tutorial. So, in this episode we're going to be going over to how to clamp the rotation of the Canon so that it is not so freaking weird to play. Because if I hit play here and it loads, I can just spin it all the way around and that is really not how we want to do that. So, let's go into how to fix this. We're going to have to make quite a few changes to our Canon script. So let's go ahead and open that up. And in our Canon script, we have this aim method, all right? So we're going to have to change some stuff about this. So first of all, let's go ahead and create two new private floats. Let's call them X rotation, and let's call them Y rotation. Awesome. Now that we have those, we're going to have to do another couple of things as well. So we want to say that these two things, that these x rotation and this y rotation, is equal to the canon's x rotation and y rotation. But we want to have them equal to degrees, not radians. So we have to say dot Euler angles, because if we click on it, it'll say the rotation as Euler angles in degrees, and that's what we want, not radians. So then we can do the same thing with y, y rotation, and we're doing this in the aim uh, method because then it gets called every single frame, and so they're set to be right every single frame. Now we're also going to have to change the fundamental way we're working with the rotation of this game object, because if we're changing it directly, then it's going to be really hard to clamp that rotation from here. So what we can do instead is we can say that every frame the canon dot transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler and we can say that that's equal to the X rotation the Y rotation and zero for Z because we don't want that to change so now that we have that it really hasn't changed much because we're still influencing them here and we're not changing the X rotation and Y rotation. So instead of directly changing the rotations here, why don't we just influence what the X and Y values are, the X and Y rotations. So on D we're going to be working with the Y value so we can say the Y rotation is plus equals turning speed. And since the and since we're modifying our Y rotation by our turning speed, and then we're setting that here, we'll see that it's able to turn. So let's go ahead and just, we can delete that, we can delete all of these. And we then we can replace them with our Y rotation and X rotations, respectively. Now, of course, we're going to come back in here and we're going to see that a couple of things are wrong right off the bat. We're going to see that the rotation isn't spinning right, but that's okay because we can go and fix that stuff. So once that happens, we can do this and we'll see that we uh, can turn right and left and that's good, but it's not perfect. So what we'll need to do is just put a minus in front of the turning speeds so that they can go the opposite directions. And now we can see that it's turning and working just like normal. So now the cannon is working just like it was, but we've just changed the way that it is working. So that's cool. So now that we have that, why don't we try to clamp it? So to do that, we're going to need to create a couple of if statements. So encapsulating both the D and the A, so both the um, left and right movement, we're going to want to say that if our Y rotation is less than or equal to whatever value we want to clamp it at, so I'm going to say 50 degrees, or the Y rotation is greater than or equal to 
the inverse of that. So if we look at the, if we look at like a unit circle or something, if we look at a circle that is 0 to 360 degrees, if we looked at it, we would see that 50, if you drew an angle up, 310 is exactly opposite of that. And since we're working with Euler angles, it wants 310 and not a negative 50. So this is, 310 is basically just the same thing as saying a negative 50. It's just wanting that instead. So we just had to do a really easy bit of math to do that. So I'm going to put these other two if statements inside of that. And I'm going to do the same thing for our x rotation. And that looks awesome. So we're going to go back into Unity. So go ahead and hit play. And we should see that our rotation is clamped, but there is going to be an issue so that once we rotate past that set amount, that it won't let us rotate anymore. So it's clamping at the right values, but it's not letting us rotate once we get to them. And that's because we don't set it back to something once we get there. Because right now it's saying, oh, well now you're outside of our parameters, we're not going to let you rotate anymore. So what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to put in an else if statement. And we're going to say that if the y rotation is greater than 50f, and that f is just for a float, and that y rotation is less than 180f, then do something. And since we want to be able to rotate it again, we want it to fall back under these parameters, we want it to be either we want it to be less than or equal to 50. So let's just go ahead and type in 49.9 f. Okay, we can say that the y rotation that is is equal to it, not just 49.9 f because what is it supposed to do with that? We can just say that. We can go ahead and copy this else if statement, throw it down in here, and then say is greater than 180 and is less than 310 because that's what our other value was and then we can say that it is now 310.1 because that is within 0.1 of our value and that's what we're doing here and we're the reason we're saying uh, 310.1 and 49.9 instead of say like just the 50 is because it'll get past it a little bit and then it'll get stuck and you'll run into gimbal lock. So this is just a way to do that. And then if you hit play, then it'll load and it'll take its time to get there. But we should see that on the uh, y-axis at least, it'll clamp that rotation back and forth and we can spin and it's all great. So if we go back in here, we can just go ahead and copy those two else if statements drag them down, throw them into the bottom of this one, and then just change that to be X rotation. Go ahead and hit Control C on that, and just paste all those in. So we also need to paste in the X rotation for this if statement as well, so that we're working with the X rotation here. Then if we go back into Unity, we should see that our values are clamping properly and this is working just perfectly and so now we can knock over this tower and it'll keep track of our score and we can't just shoot way out of bounds like heathens awesome so thank you for watching I think in the next episode we're gonna cover like a level select screen setting up maybe a couple different levels so you guys should definitely tune into that That'll be up next week. So thanks again for watching, and you guys have a great day.